Today on Great Places Seen, I walk toward quiet, pristine shorelines, the water where it falls, and places where it should be. I travel past giant cliffs, through groves of old trees, to caves large and small, and modern cavernous structures, even a peak at the heavens above. Come along, take a look, and find out what's around the next corner. Good morning, day two at Hocking Hill State Park. Several more things that I want to see today. My final day before heading home. Let's go check out the first location. A few more clouds for today. After yesterday's big storms that rolled through. Might not be able to see it on camera, but there's a good bit of mist just kind of hanging in the woods here. You can certainly feel it. Today is going to undoubtedly end up being a very humid day. And here's an earthen dam that creates Rose Lake. There are only a handful of people fishing this early Tuesday morning. They don't seem to be catching much. It's very calm with woodland sounds all around. Rose Lake is the nickname for Hocking Hills Reservoir, which serves the park's water needs. There is an actual Rose Lake near Youngstown, Ohio. That's well to the northeast, nowhere near here. This area more broadly is known as Rose Hollow, and therefore the common name Rose Lake. It's not too deep, but being a reservoir, no swimming is allowed. water is very clear. These little fish won't be caught with a hook. I'll put the GoPro in the water to see if I can catch them visually. Of course, they're not coming near a strange object that just fell in. Above our little worlds that easily go unnoticed. Dragonflies are buzzing back and forth by the edge. One is very large and is flying a straight out and back path. As much as I try, he's tough to get on camera. I can forget getting them in focus. Clearly, National Geographic isn't calling me anytime soon. These little guys, whatever they are, are at least easier to see. Here's the spillway. On the dam, a field of wildflowers. Those I can get a decent shot of. For a tiny lake, it offers some nice big views. There is a path through the woods at least part of the way around. I'm not venturing that far today.
There's the park water tower, and there's also a small water treatment facility next to the swimming pool. As in much of the park, this is an older growth, mature forest. I didn't expect to find mollusks. If you look closely, they're moving. I hear and see fish jumping, but like the dragonfly, I'm having no luck capturing on camera. Yeah, too late. This sign shows different birds are here. This is the only one I've seen, and again too fast for my limited abilities. Here we go, slow as a turtle, more my speed. I think he's allowed. The breeze is blowing away the last of the morning mist. This is an incredibly scenic and beautiful state park. My video really cannot capture the depth of this beauty here. You have to come see it yourself. Your eyes see so much more than the camera ever will. It also can't convey how sticky it feels outside. On to the visitor center, which I will finally visit while open. Very impressive. Large. Two levels. Lots of great information about the park. What's the best time of year for the water level to be up? Good question. So it's usually about late February to mid-May. Okay. Um, it's going to be a little bit colder, but also once you get in that April, May side, you can still get warm weather. Um, so if you come in between there, you'll see water flowing. Right now it's trickling. We're on the back end. Um, when you get into July and August for the dog days of summer, you don't get any Nothing. water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of snow melt and that sort of thing? Yep, or? it's seasonal because it's from snow melt or it's from uh, rainfall. So we actually didn't get a lot of snow this year. So it wasn't flowing as much as it usually does. Um, we had a pretty decent spring. It, it rained quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, but snow melt, we didn't get anything. Uh, so yeah, it's all seasonal dependent. Here's a gorge diorama. After walking through this one yesterday, I think these walls appear larger and more vertical than the real thing. Still, you get the idea of what's here. Of course, there's more about the old man's cave story here. And then there's Grandma Gatewood, Ohio native and hiking legend. Born in 1887, Emma Rowena Gatewood set out at age 67 to hike the Appalachian Trail, thinking it was an easy path. She didn't get far, but the next year she became the first woman to through hike the entire 2100 plus miles. And then again, and again at age 76, when she became the first person to through hike the AT three times. Over 18 years, Grandma Gatewood hiked over 14,000 miles all over the United States. Hawking Hills was one of her favorites, a six-mile portion of the Buckeye Trail is named after her.
I'm going to a trailhead at the Hocking Hills State Park Lodge and Conference Center. I'll loop around the lodge, go down the short connector trail, which is all stairs, and a short way past some fascinating sandstone cliffs to Whispering Cave. Like the caves, this place is huge! If you're not into camping, no worries. This appears a very comfortable stay. This is a much nicer trail than most, probably because it's coming from the lodge where folks are spending a little bit of money. <laughs> I will say, at least for my stride, these steps are spaced out just right. It's a beautiful grove of pine trees along the Hemlock Bridge Trail. Some railing by the cliffs which you do not see in other areas of the park. Again, lots of details hiding in plain sight. It's so easy to walk the trails and be awestruck by the enormity of the gorges, caves, and cliffs. And that's okay. But there is a lot more to the story of this place, as these same features reveal if you want to look closer. It's a story millions of years in the making, of this place once part of the ocean floor, then rising with the mountains, covered by massive sheets of ice which retreated to the north, stalled, and melted, resulting in colossal flooding. The sandstone, hard on the top and bottom but softer in the middle, became hollowed out. Torrents of water still clearly showing their marks in different ways as you walk along. Fault lines revealed. Huge boulders that were once part of the top layer that fell down. Crystals and mineral deposits gleaming in the sunlight. Many varieties of plants that have found footholds in the rocks and grow in seemingly most unlikely places. And water that still flows and is still reshaping this area, even if imperceptible during our lifetimes. It's a very alive and dynamic park. I didn't even mention the abundance of wildlife. Everywhere you look, there's something to find. Here is pitted rock-like honeycombs made by bees. These tightly packed areas of small holes are the result of what is called honeycomb weathering. Water permeates through porous sandstone, eroding loose sand grains and leaving small pits inside the bedrock. The firm edges are iron and silica. Ice can be seen in them in the winter. And in the warmer months, homes for tiny plants and creatures. What a great approach to Whispering Cave. Not Whispering Cave, it's a prelude.
a rock viper getting ready to bite. Here we go, down and around. Nice rock steps, except when they get a little wet and there's a little bit of mud, this stuff can be very slippery. As you might guess, acoustics led to the name Whispering Cave. It is said that a whisper at one end can be heard almost all the way to the other end. That sounds impressive given its dimensions. 275 feet long, 105 feet high. We won't find out today as a school group and other visitors are louder than a whisper. <laughs> Sometimes much louder. The basic geology we've learned about the rest of the park applies here too. This immense recessed cave had incredible forces pushing through it, washing out stone in between the roof and floor. Looking out of the cave is a massive ravine where the water flow went. There's still water here, and we've also learned it's much more impressive in late winter and early spring with snow melt and rain. So a return trip one day during that time of year is on the travel list. At least we get a sense of this waterfall even in summer and its long descent down into the ravine. As we walk to the other side, more viewing angles of Whispering Cave. You can bet geologists have had some fun in here, and no doubt continue to explore the stories nature has written in sandstone.
I certainly don't know everything about what I'm seeing. I do know it's really old and really cool. It's time to move on. I have to backtrack along the cliffs, get to the car, and get farther down the road to the next locations. But I'll take a few more good looks along the way. No need to rush too much. Just think, these rocks will still be here thousands, perhaps millions of years from now. All right, let's go. From the lodge, I'll pass the John Glenn Astronomy Park as I drive toward Conkles Hollow. The Astronomy Park is a dark site with minimal lighting to help see the night sky. The circular design incorporates alignments and symbolism. The notched columns are like a modern Stonehenge. The metal ball at the center represents Earth. The larger central bench is the relative size of Jupiter, while the plaza itself represents the Sun. The outer walls help block light for nighttime viewing. John Glenn was an Ohio native served as a U.S. Senator, and in 1962 became the first American to orbit the Earth. He gave his name to the Astronomy Park Project before his death in 2016 to help inspire future generations to become passionate about space and science. Conkles Hollow is an Ohio State Nature Preserve. While prominently marked on the Hocking Hills State Park maps, it's not part of the park. It is part of the shared geology of this area. It's a large gorge carved out by water. The main trail is nearly straight. A rim trail circles above. I'm heading straight down the middle. Despite the basic similarities of all the gorges, each own unique formations and views.
the Gorge Trail, I would guess, is the most popular one here. And look at this. It's a concrete trail. And it follows what created the gorge. There is a big hill of ferns at the base of this rock cliff. Tall eastern hemlock trees thrive in places like this. They create an atmosphere similar to the boreal forests of Canada. These hemlocks can live as long as 900 years. But most of the old growth trees in this area were cut after settlement two centuries ago. The bark was used for tanning leather, while the vitamin C rich pine needles help prevent scurvy. The roots of these trees extending down the side of the rock cliff. I don't know why, it always amazes me. Lots of little caves. The rim is way up there. Check out this side. Wow, really tall as well. The large blocks of sandstone throughout the valley floor are called slump blocks. They were firmly attached high on the bedrock walls until gradual erosion loosened them. Because they slide imperceptibly down the hillside, they're also called float blocks. Lower branches of these pine trees almost give you the feeling of uh, moss. Here's the grotto. A grotto is defined as a small cave, usually with attractive features. This grotto has what some see as the shape of a horse's head on the back wall. The sign says it's best seen from the path. Uh, I'm not seeing it. The rock outcrops are black hand sandstone. This type of rock is found in a narrow band from the Ohio River north almost all the way to Ohio's Lake Erie shoreline. As we know, it has three main layers. The soft middle is where caves, recesses, and other features have been made by erosion. Yellow, orange, and red colors are prominent, all evidence of iron oxide which binds sand grain together. Coming up on the falls, and not surprising this time of year, they are dry. Although the stream has water, the smooth, dark streaks show where the water runs in late winter and early spring. The end of the concrete trail is near the highest cliff in Conkles Hollow. 
The gorge trail continues to wind through a much narrower passage, but it's filled with large rocks, and that makes it more difficult to get through. I'm not going there today. Two days of walking through gorges and caves is taking its toll on my back. That's my cue to turn back. Sometimes the best views are behind you, so when you backtrack, you'll inevitably see some things you didn't going the other direction. It's another hot day with storm clouds appearing. Back to the trailer. Two small tea candles are getting my campfire going. I keep a pack of them on board, along with empty paper towel rolls. They're great for stuffing kindling inside. They weigh nothing, they're easy to light. There we go. The candles have this wood burning without great effort. With the evening almost complete, I'm on the road early to beat the heat at least for part of the day. It'll take about seven hours to return. Thanks for watching, and follow GPS to the next destination.